the ancient ever-burning lamps that burned for hundreds or even thousands of years. Well, we know that in the churches, even in the synagogue, the ancient synagogue, the temple in Jerusalem, they had oil lamps that were burning forever. They were never put out. And uh, the oil from those lamps that was placed inside the bottom of the some pit uh, when uh, the exiles of uh, Israel went to e the Babylon, the Babylon um, exile, when they returned, they found the, um, during the Maccabees, they placed the, um, they were looking for the oil that was in the, uh, placed on the Holy of Holies. And uh, the uh, high priest told them to look for it, and they found it, and it was sort of like a slushy um, tar type of thing. And uh, because when oil gets very, when oil gets very old, it becomes very, uh, it has an, a terrible smell to it, and it becomes very jelly looking. And they place that on the holy altar, and when the sunlight hit it, it turned into a flame, and that uh, obviously somehow purified the uh, the uh, holy altar. So that was the beginning of Hanukkah as well. Um, anyway, that's... I went off on a tangent, but anyway, that's very important. The light lamps, the oil lamps in the churches, in the uh, Old te Temple of the Old, te uh, Old uh, Testament. Now, according to a the fire triangle model, there are three elements required to start a fire. That's heat, fuel, and of course, you need air an oxidizing agent. And all these things have to be present in the right proportions to start a fire. And if you don't have any one of these, one of them may be removed, that means that the fire will be extinguished or prevented. So when we consider these elements, if they're not infinitely abundant and not always so readily available, is it possible to literally keep the fire burning forever? There are such things as eternal flames or the fires which are either intentionally ignited by human intervention or caused by natural phenomena such as peat fires and coal fires. But there are accounts from the olden times that speak of ever-burning oil lamps that supposedly stayed ablaze for hundreds and even thousands of years without an obvious source of fuel and could not be put out by conventional means. So how our ancestors managed to accomplish such a thing and where they possibly acquired this secret knowledge from remains a mystery up to this day. The eternal flame in mythological texts and records, the earliest accounts referring to an eternal source of light can be found in many of the ancient mythological texts. One example of a divine flame is supposedly a power possessed by the gods and also the secret knowledge to create it supposedly an exclusive property of these powerful beings, these gods and demigods. Let's remember Prometheus Bound, you know, he tried to uh, help humans by giving them, for example, um, things that were uh, secrets of the gods, secret knowledge, and he gave them fire to keep warm and cook and everything. And he was uh, uh, obviously chastised for that. So they were considered exclusive property of these uh, mighty beings, these gods and demigods that should never have taught mankind certain secret knowledge. Now, for example, the ancient Greek mythology, the god Prometheus was punished for breaking this godly law by stealing fire from Mount Olympus and giving it to the humans. Now, the eternal flame is also mentioned in the legends of ancient Egypt, Romans, as well as the Byzantine Empire. For example, Plutarch, in his work named the De Facto Oraculorum, wrote about a lamp that burned at the temple of Jupiter Ammon in Egypt. And this lamp was placed over the door, and despite the fact that it stood in the open air, the priests of the temple claimed that its light was incapable of getting put out by wind or rain. Now, other temples of worship of the time also had similar accounts of their ever-burning or perpetual burning lamps. 
St. Augustine, the Bishop of Hippo of North Africa, wrote about a sacred Egyptian temple dedicated to Venus, Aphrodite, which housed a lamp that could not be extinguished, and he referred to the phenomenon as the devil's work. It's also been said that Numa Pompilius, the second king of Rome, possessed the ability to communicate with the gods, and he had done so through an eternally burning lamp in a temple which he offered to an elemental creature. So this led some people to speculate that the king, that is uh, Pomp uh, Pompilius, of the second king of Rome, possessed some knowledge of electricity, and that Tullus Hostilius, Numa's successor, the uh, second king of Rome's successor, ended up losing his life after his, his, his failed attempt to harness lightning and also to draw electricity from it. A similar lamp was also found about 140 AD near Rome. It was in the tomb of Pallas, King Evander's son. This lamp is said to have kept burning for more than 2,000 years, and it could not be extinguished by simple methods such as pouring water over it or blowing it at blowing air uh, on the flame to blow it out. The only means to put out this fire is by draining the unknown and unusual liquid stocked inside the lamp's bowl. So the, it was an unknown, um, mysterious liquid that was uh, feeding the lamp. During the reign of the Byzantine Empire Justinian, about uh, 527 AD, an ever-burning lamp was purportedly found by a troop of soldiers in Edessa in Syria. The story says that the lamp had an inscription which suggested that before it was discovered, it was burning for around 550 years. That was beginning around 27 AD. So obviously this was uh, ancient secret knowledge of, of, of advanced technology that was around from the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in 1540, a tomb which was thought to have been the resting place of Cicero's daughter, Tulliola. She died in 44 BC. Uh, this was uh, discovered along the Appian Way of Rome. This lamp was found inside a sealed vault that remained unopened for 1,550 years. And its light only died after the tomb was opened and the lamp got exposed to the air. Can you imagine? What is this? I mean, that is... We don't even know what these things are today, in this day and age. What were these things? When King Henry VIII separated from the Roman Catholic Church to establish his own Church of England, the Protestant Church, he commanded the destruction of several churches in Britain, not only churches, but also monasteries. I would say all of them, all of the monasteries, he, he, um, he closed up, and he also destroyed them. A huge big one that I saw was, uh, and a huge church was in Coventry of England, I mean, the, the pillars of the church were so huge, uh, you couldn't put your arms around them. You had to have like five or six people holding hands around the pillars. That's how huge they were. So you can imagine how tall um, they were and how, uh, the massive weight of the roof they had to support above them. That's how huge these uh, buildings were, magnificent buildings that were destroyed by Henry VIII. But anyway, that's I'm going off on a tangent again. I just love, you know, England does have things that you don't have in the States or Canada or even Greece. You have the um, medieval, uh, you know, the Dark Ages medieval construction, which we don't have in the New World or, or even in the very ancient world. And uh, I was uh, astonished and very, very nicely surprised that there magnificent construction. But anyway, so uh, King Henry VIII separated from the Roman Catholic Church. He established the Protestant Church of England and commanded the destruction of churches and monasteries, as we said. And it also led to the plundering of many tombs. And among them was supposedly the resting place of Constantius Chlorus, who was the father of Emperor Constantine who allowed the Christians to have uh, to follow their faith freely. He was called the Constantine Emperor. Constantine of Rome was the one who established the Christian, uh, the free Christian faith of Byzantium.
which is today Constantinople, his city, uh, which is Istanbul. Um, so uh, he passed away around the fourth century. When they opened his tomb, they found a burning lamp, which they believe remained lit for over 1,200 years. So there we go again. Another interesting story about ever-burning lamps is told by occult writer Eliphas Levy in his book titled Histoire de la Magie. He wrote about a man named Jet Kael, an enigmatic French rabbi, and this rabbi served as an advisor to Louis IX's court in the 13th century. Uh, Jet Kael is said to have owned a lamp that he placed in front of his house, which possessed neither oil nor wick. And when people inquired about the source that had fueled the lamp's light, he insisted on keeping it a secret. Many tried to replicate what he achieved but failed to do so. So obviously, this rabbi, Jekael, knew of this ancient uh, type of uh, advanced technology, the secret of this ever-burning lamp, which he had in front of his house. Um, when people inquired the source of the fuel, he insisted on keeping it a secret. And many tried to replicate it, but failed to do that. Speculation suggests that Jekyll managed to create a primitive form of electricity, but no one could attest to his claim without absolute certainty. So what does all, all this mean? The ideal of a, of a perpetual, inextinguishable light, a flame, uh, something giving us uh, light, without a fuel source remains controversial. And it's a polarizing topic, even up to today. We don't know how that's done. Logic would tell us that it's very likely that tales about these ever-burning lamps could be nothing more than imaginative stories that hold no water in real life, especially when you factor in the fact that physical evidence of these perpetual burning fires has yet to be found. Okay, but it's very strange to me that you have all these recordings of them, and obviously in various stages, you know, antiquity and then around uh, 2,000 years ago, and then in, during the Middle Ages, and even by this uh, Jewish rabbi, I mean, that's even by Constantine, uh, uh, Constantine's um, father's uh, tomb. So this is not obviously something that's uh, faked or um, a myth or just a story. There must be something to this. Just like the Greeks had the... Uh, uh, the fire that never goes out, um, the mystery of the pier, the, the fire that they used the, um, to, uh, to, uh, in their naval battles uh, that could not be extinguished. And the more water you poured on it, the more flame came out. Um, that was a real thing, and we still don't know what that was. So um, even if there is irrefutable proof, it has yet to be made known to the rest of the world. But when we look at it from a different perspective, maybe our ancestors did possess this ancient knowledge on how to light up a perpetual flame, and only this information somehow got lost with passage of time, and the secrets were taken with uh, the people who knew about them, and they took them to their graves, they never told anybody. And if these ever-burning lamps are not just mere legend, then maybe their existence could only be explained by factors beyond what mainstream science currently knows of. And then they can't fathom such extraterrestrial beings or supernatural, or supernatural phenomena. So as of now, we can't validate or totally discredit the existence of these eternally lit fires. But what we can be certain of at this point is that people's fascination over these so-called ever-burning light lamps perpetual lamps will probably endure for years to come and maybe even forever and uh, in my uh, my closing let's remember that a lot of the tombs in ancient Egypt were um, uh, painted inside internally with beautiful artwork and uh, hieroglyphs hieroglyphics and uh, murals and it would have taken months if not years to do all this in there but there yet there is so dark in there, there is no soot from any oil lamps or candles that they would have been using to paint all these beautiful things. Uh, they were totally clean from ash and soot. So that means that they did have some kind of uh, a light source that was clean and not giving out ash and soot. 
And some believe that uh, they may have had electricity. The ancient Egyptians may have had electricity. Uh, the, the Dendera light bulb of ancient Dendera, ancient Egypt, could have been a reality. Some kind of electricity, electrical source lighting up lamp, lamps and um, uh, electrical lamps that they used inside these areas to um, finish their artwork on the interior of these tombs. Very interesting. So let's have some comments. What do you think it could have been? If you know, please let us know. Thank you. This is on Beyond Science. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.